Hello, so today we are going to learn about the technique Western blotting. So what is blotting? The blotting is a technique by which a micromolecule such as DNA, RNA and protein is resolved in a gel matrix. The gel matrix just like just, just like agarose and the protein get resolved in a gel matrix and then the resolved molecule are transferred to the solid support the solid support may be a nitrocellulose membrane and it is detected by a specific probe just as it may be uh, we can use different probes such as enzyme link probes just like just like hrp conjugate and sorghum blotting is used for transferring dna northern blotting is used for transferring rna and western blotting is used for protein so blotting techniques due to some technical issues here was a diagram but it was not shown so there are three blotting technique first is a southern blotting second is a northern blotting and third is a western blotting so southern blotting is used for separation of DNA and northern blotting is used for separation of RNA and western blotting is used for separation of protein. So western blotting is a laboratory technique which is used to detect specific protein in a blood tissue sample. The method involves using a gel electrophoresis to separate sample protein and the separated proteins are transferred out of the gel to the surface of membrane as i told you earlier then now i know what is western blotting now i want to perform it so how i will perform western blotting so for that first i will extract protein then i will perform gel electrophoresis then blotting which means transferring to the solid surface then blocking with the bsa treatment with the primary antibody and treatment with the secondary antibody and treatment with the specific substrate and in the last analysis so here we will perform eight steps to get our required result so first step is extraction of protein so cell lysate is most common sample in a western blotting the protein is extracted from the cell by mechanical or chemical lysis of the cell the step is also known as tissue preparation so for tissue preparation what we do we lysis lyse the cell and then uh, we extract the protein from it the concentration of protein is determined by spectroscopy. Once the protein is extracted from a cell, we perform spectroscopy. When a sufficient amount of protein sample is obtained, it is diluted with a loading buffer and tracking dye. So why we add a loading buffer? So loading buffer which contains glycerol which helps the sample to sink in a gel so that's why it can run properly and tracking dye is added also added just because to track uh, where our protein is whether our protein is uh, moving well or not so here is a diagram where you can see a cell lysis with the centrifugation and the supernatant containing protein and here you can see a pellet and we will keep the supernatant and we will add a loading buffer and a tracking dye to it the second step is gel electrophoresis the sample is loaded in a veil of SGS page which is sodium dodecyl sulfate polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis so protein are separated on the basis of electric charge and isoelectric point molecular weight and combination of all of this so why we use sds page 
as you know um, sometimes we can also add as we we also add sgs in a protein sample uh, when i performed western blotting i what i did i added i took a sample and i added sgs in it and i just heated it for some time so that the protein will get denatured and we can get a fine bands of it and it can easily run throughout the chair as you know uh, the protein can be present in a primary secondary or tertiary structure to resolve those structure we use sgs which will break break the tertiary structure of protein then the small protein move faster than a large one protein as we know the small protein will move faster and the larger protein will move slower the protein are negatively charged so they will move towards the positive anode as the electric current is applied so here you can see whole where western blotting is performed by using sgs page so you can see here we have added sgs in a loading buffer you can see here is a stacking gel and resolving gel so the sample is moving from a cathode to the anode towards a positive end so third step is blotting where we use nitrocellular may brain for a blotting purpose so the nitrocellular membrane is placed on the gel the separated protein from the gel is transferred to the nitrocellulose by capillary action so there are two types of blotting first is uh, the blotting by a capillary action and second is electro blotting so the blotting by capillary action can take one or two days and electro blotting is a fast and efficient so in which we apply a electric current through which the sample will transfer from the gel to the nitrocellulose membrane here the more efficient transfer of desired protein from the gel to nitrocellulose can be gate by electro blotting electro blotting nitrocellulose membrane is sandwiched between the reel and the cassette of filter paper and the current is passed through the gel causing transfer of protein to the membrane here you can see the diagram where the filter paper is put when gel is pit between the membrane and filter paper and as we pass the current through it the uh, protein will transfer on the nitrocellulose membrane and the step 4 is blocking and blocking is very important step in a western blotting the antibodies are the protein so that they are likely to bind nitrocellulose paper so before adding a primary antibody the membrane or non specific saturated or mask by using casein bovine serum albumin bovine serum albumin is used as a blocking agent as you know bovine serum albumin is a protein so it will uh, bind to the nitrocellulose membrane due to the Uh, because the nitrocellulose membrane shows high affinity towards protein so we add a nitrocell we add a bovine serum albumin so that bsc will bind to it and it will not cause any false result here you can see the other protein target protein and other protein so the antibody will not bind to the surface of membrane so in a fifth step we will treat it with the primary antibody the primary antibody is specific to the target protein
the primary body antibody we will use which is specific to the target protein the primary antibody specific to the desired protein it will form antigen antibody complex and it will bind to the our target protein treatment then the step 6 is treatment with secondary antibody the secondary antibody is the enzyme label for example alkaline phosphatase or horse radish peroxidase which is hrp conjugate is labeled with the secondary antibody so the secondary antibody will be specific to the primary antibody and secondary antibody will bind to the primary antibody the secondary antibody is antibody against primary antibody and it will form antigen antibody complex then once we added enzyme link secondary antibody we will treat it with the suitable substrate the enzyme on the anti secondary antibody will convert substrate to the product and that product may be a colored product or maybe it ha huh, yes it could be a colored product so when the substrate reacts with the enzyme the the product is formed the colored product is formed and to visualize the enzyme action the reaction mixture incubated with a specific substrate the enzyme convert the substrate to given visible color product so band of the color can be visualized in a membrane western blotting is also quantitative test and determine the amount of protein sample here you can see the bands the darker the bands the more protein is present in the sample the darker the band the more protein the lighter the band the less protein in the sample so here you can see a protein marker or a ladder or here we can see a sample so colored band are appeared on the nitrocellulose membrane when we used hrp conjugate linked secondary antibody and those hrp conjugate reacted with the substrate and formed a colored product and here we can see a colored band and from this band we can do analysis of data the how much protein is present in the sample and so why we perform western blotting so here are some applications to determine the size and amount of protein in a given sample so from this procedure we will come to know what are the size of the protein and the in what amount the protein is present in the sample so it is also used for disease di disease diagnosis and it will detect the antibody against virus and bacteria in a serum the western blotting technique is confirmatory test for hiv which we detect anti hiv antibodies in a patient serum useful to detect defective protein for prion simple same disease so thank you so much for listening me